Hello friends, welcome back. It's May 16th, 2022, and the topic of today's video is pawpaws. We're out in the pawpaw patch. But before I get into the, today's video, I wanted to mention that you can also find us now on Instagram at Captive Roots, um, just all one word. If you enjoy our videos, um, please check us out there as well. I'll be posting a lot from the orchards and gardens. If you're ever wondering why it's called Captive Roots, the channel and, the, and now the Instagram page, I used to have a container garden blog years and years ago called Captive Roots. And so I thought it was a neat name for a container garden, and I just sort of got attached to it and kept it. And we still do a lot of container gardening, even here at the house. Um, so that's our update. In today's video, I want to talk about a few things. One is the stages of flower development in a pawpaw tree. And so you can see three stages right here in this one picture. I was lucky enough to be able to get it from left to right. That green bell is sort of the middle stage right along the stem there, or the, um, the trunk, or the branch, I guess, is branch in this case. You can see a small bud that's sort of the early stage, and on the right is the um, more developed flower. So we're going to take a look at all of these in the orchard. And then I want to talk about something kind of interesting and that is do pawpaw trees actually protect your other fruit trees? It's something I've heard others say and I think I've had a very similar experience. So I'll share that as we walk around the orchard and take a look at these flowers in action. So here's our sunflower pawpaw tree. As I said, it's May 16th today, it's Monday, it, it just rained all day, so everything's very wet out here. Uh, but what's neat about this sunflower pawpaw is, is there's all kinds of stages of flower development in one tree, which is typical of pawpaws, and kind of a built-in defense mechanism against frosts, as we talked about in another video. There's the very early stage, they just look, usually they're more red, it's rained all day, so every, as I mentioned, everything's very wet, and so they they're kind of like they're kind of like a velvety texture, so they soak up the rain. There's one a little bit further developed, and then what they'll do is they'll turn into these green bells, and so here's two various stages of development. They get larger and larger, and then those green bells will eventually start to turn red, and so if we go down a little further on the tree, there's some red. Uh, bells and then eventually you'll see later in the video that they'll open up and then the pollinators will start to work on them and I actually was able to film some pollinators in action so we'll take a look at them too but you'll notice those leaves are just starting to kind of come out it's May 15th May 16th sorry um, which is typical you know they will leaf out a little bit later everything else here's our chestnut tree um, it's pretty much leafed out, starting to flower for the season. Um, really cool tree. The bees love that one, let me tell you. That whole tree will buzz. I'm just leaving the walk-in to show kind of the distance between that lone pawpaw and our patch over here. And that's kind of relevant to what I'm going to talk about in the second part of the video, about do they protect the trees that they're near. Here's our Shenandoah pawpaw. This was the one that gave us two fruit last year. It was our first two fruit we ever um, were able to get on the pawpaws. So here's a flower that's more developed. I like that. It's kind of a cool shot of it too. As I said, it's been very wet here today. Uh, looks like a creature of some kind or something. Pawpaws are just a really cool tree uh, in general. I mean, they're unique, but they're native to North America. So they, in a sense, they belong here. I mean, they and they've built defenses for our weather, for our climate, for insects. You don't have to spray them with anything because insects just don't bother them. Japanese beetles will bother them a little, but not like other kinds of trees. They'll do very minimal damage. Here's a picture of, or a, a clip, of a flower when it's totally open. So you can see they spread, they almost look like a rose or something, and inside there is the, um, the part of the flower that will make the fruit where you can pollinate it. So I'll show you in a minute uh, some pollinators in action, but that Shenandoah you can see is much further along than the sunflower. On that note, here's an NC1, so it's right next to the Shenandoah, and you can see the flowers are uh, a little bit behind. They're like a stage behind those. So cultivar does play a role, just like every other variety of fruit. Um, same as true in pawpaws, you're going to get different characteristics. Um, here's a pollinator at work. I mentioned pollination. Well, you can do it with a paintbrush, like any fruit, but pawpaws are pollinated primarily by flies and beetles. So here's a fly at work. 
um, on one of the pawpaw flowers. And so bees don't really pay attention to pawpaws. It's something to keep in mind. Just sort of a weird um, quirk. They are a quirky tree in a lot of ways. I mean, it, you, here you are, you can grow something like this in New York State and you've got 12 inch, 14 inch leaves. It looks tropical, but it's native to our area. Those are two pear trees. And so I wanted to mention something that I've found to be kind of anecdotally true as we pan around here. Um, and I'm just panning around to show like all these trees are leafed out, but the pawpaws are just starting, which is not something to be concerned about. It's totally normal. So why do I show those pear trees and um, what does it have to do with the pawpaws? Well, I've found pawpaws to be a fantastic companion plant for your apples especially and pears, any, pretty much anything you'd grow in the orchard, peaches, um, cherries. And I think they may have some protective qualities and I'll explain. I don't have scientific evidence, but and I've heard other people say the same thing anecdotally. Now anecdotes aren't evidence, but they do sort of add up after a while. Those two pear trees I showed are right next to this pawpaw patch and we've had them in the ground since 2017. I planted these pawpaws here in this spot in 2019. Um, and so it's only been a couple of years, but I bought them larger mostly. The point of the story there, though, is I don't really spray the pears with anything because I can't use the bonide fruit tree spray on the pears, and so I didn't know what to spray on them, so I just didn't spray them. And for years, the Asian pear has given us fruit, and the Bartlett pear gave us fruit last year. And it's being right next to the pawpaw patch, we didn't really notice any bug damage on any of those fruit. Here's another pollinator at work on the um, flower. But I thought that was kind of interesting, sort of filed it away. Um, maybe it's just pears aren't bothered as much as apples. We haven't, we have only really been getting fruit from the pears for a year or two, the Bartlett and the Asian pear, so maybe it's just luck. The other piece of anecdotal evidence though is uh, I spray all of the apple trees, I try to aim for twice a year. Uh, with the bonite fruit tree spray. So I try to do one right after petal fall and one kind of in the middle of the summer, but a lot of times I get really sloppy about it and don't do it um, in the middle of the summer, and that was true last year. A lot of our apples were kind of buggy. They get, you know, they were still fine to eat, but they were sort of blemished. But the honey crisp apple tree, which was right next to our sunflower pawpaw, had almost picture-perfect apples on it and it received the same exact spray regimen as every other apple and anyone who knows anything about growing apples um, you've heard many times that Honeycrisp are one of those that are tougher to grow they, they need a lot more spray and so forth and these were like grocery store apples and they got the same spray as everything else so another piece of anecdotal evidence was it because it was eight feet away from a pretty good sized pawpaw tree I can't say that that's the reason, but it's notable, I think, because there's really only a couple apple trees in that part of the yard, and that's the only one that's fruiting right now, but the fruit that it produced were almost perfect um, with the same spray regimen that other areas of the yard, um, the fruit was a little bit more blemished, a lot more blemished. So I don't think it's just luck, but I've heard others say the same thing. If you've had that experience, please share in the comment section below. Um, because that could be a real benefit to these trees. So thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.